Hey there everyone, I'm out at Big Brook today. I'm hopefully gonna have a good day out here. I'm hopefully gonna find some nice Cretaceous age fossils today, around 70 million years old. So hopefully we have some good luck. Lots of oysters and bellum nights got washed out in the last storm. I'm not really looking for shark teeth in this section of the stream. I'm more looking for the inverts, but around here is usually a, uh, a pretty good spot for them. Another good sized oyster valve. This is pretty cool. There's a spider that's built its, its nest and its web inside the 70 million year old Cretaceous oyster. That's pretty neat. I'll put him back. I mean, you can see right here, after that last storm, here's a Pycnodonte, Pycnodonte, Pycnodonte. All of these are Cretaceous oysters, all in a pile right here. Most of them are broken up, but I'm positive there are some nice ones in this area here. Here's a Charistothyrus. This is what I'm looking for right now, but a different species of it. This is Charistothyrus plicata. Um, I'm looking for a species that has more plications, these lines coming from the base of the shell out to the edge. I'm looking for a species with more lines that are thinner. Uh, it's the rare variety that you can find here. This is a good start though to find this one just uh, sitting on the surface. They aren't exactly rare, I just think they're cool. This looks like a nice one. Well here's, this is perfect. Here's a, a Charistothyrus phenuximi. This is the rarer species. Oh, it's amazing. I can't believe I found one that quick. It's a really big one too. This is the biggest one I've ever found. Let me wash that off for you. I'll give you guys a side-by-side -side view. So the Nuxima is on the left and the uh, Charistothyrus placata is on the right. And you can see the difference there. It's probably a lot easier to just visualize it when it's out in front of you instead of trying to listen to how I described it. That's really cool though. I can't believe I found one that quick. Awesome, let's hope we can have some more luck just like that. It's nice to see this spot pay off exactly how I thought it would. That, that doesn't always happen. In fact, it very, very rarely ever happens that way with fossil hunting. Here's another placata, Christothyrus placata. Here's one. This looks like another placata. It's a really tiny one. Yeah, it's really small. In good shape though, has both valves. Usually they tend to have both valves, uh, brachiopods, because unlike bivalves, which use the muscle on their shell to pull their shell shut, so when, like when you've seen a clam that's dead or that's been cooked or something like that, the shell opens right up. Uh, brachiopods had to use their sh the muscles in their shell to uh, open their shell, so when they die, the shell contracts and closes shut. Um, and that just makes it easier for both valves to fossilize and be preserved together compared to uh, bivalves, which you usually only find one valve of uh, at a time. I just found these two tiny, tiny little Charistothyrus placata. Uh, these are about as small as I think I've ever found. Um, I already put the larger ones away, so I don't have anything to compare them to right now, but I'll show you guys at the end. Well, here's another Charistothyrus. This is also Placata, the more common one. And there's another, another Christothyrus Placata. All these right here probably washed out yesterday, with, or the day before with the rain. Otherwise, when they just get tumbled in the stream, even though they're more durable than the bivalves, they still break apart after a certain point. So here's a Christothyrus. That's Placata again. It shows you how common they are. They're really not very rare at all. The Nuxamai are a bit rare, but the Placata you can find pretty much as many as you want in a trip. I'm probably going to leave most of these here, other than the Nuxamai, of course. So I started trying to sift a little bit. Oh, here's one. Here's a little Charistothyrus. Well, not a little Charistothyrus, a pretty big one. They don't get much bigger than this. Oh, here's one. Another Placata. Only have the one Vinoxamai so far. Um, that's pretty much what I expected to happen. I just didn't expect it to be the second one I found all day. Yeah, I'm not sure how many we're at total uh, so far. Oh, here's another one. Lots of little placatas. 
There's two on this little section. And there's the third one. Oops. Three little placatas. They're still nice. They're just really, really common. Oh, belted kingfisher. I think uh, a lot could get washed down off the cliff here and get piled up up against this tree. Um, so we'll see what we can find. A little bell and night in the mud here. In pretty good shape. Another bell of night. Here's another one. This looks complete. And another one. Which might be complete. It might also just be the top bell. Oh yeah, it's complete. So that's two sitting right next to each other. And here's three. Those three were all sitting right next to each other. Here's four that I found on this little hill. Here's another one, this may be broken. Oh no, it's complete. There's five. There's another one, this is the sixth one I've pulled off of this little hill. I'll whittle down what I found today to five. That's the rules here. I'll leave the rest on a bank somewhere else. So here are all the day's finds. I found 18 brachiopods in total, uh, one Charistothyrus maximi, and 17 Charistothyrus plicata. That was a really successful day. Here are the five fossils that I kept from the hunt, just to follow all the posted rules that Big Brook Preserve has. Kept the Charistothyrus maximi, and then four different Charistothyrus plicata. That were my favorites from the day. Thanks for following along, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.